rooms, how many space, how many playgrounds. And to work on a concrete place, it can give you an answer what you really need. So if you were, will be looking for another, another property, the process will be very helpful that you will consciously know what you need, how big space, okay? So this is, I think, not waste of time at all. And the result, what I promised, will be some renderings, some plans, which you as a faculty or the school, you can use it for your donors to present something, what you really want to. That will be hopefully very helpful, the result. You will get plans, sections, views, also some perspective drawings, renderings. It will be like a presentation of the school, what you want to. I would like to begin with a short words of Rudolf Steiner to get into the mood of our lecture. Etze homo. In the heart, the weaving feeling. In the head, the light of thinking. In the limbs, the strength of willing. Weaving, enlightening, strengthening, weaving, enlightenment, strengthening. Lo, this is man. In the water of pedagogy, there are like three main issues or topics which you I'm sure know that's the truth, beauty and good or goodness you are working with this in all stages of the child's age through the education here and these are like uh, three basic principles which can be also implemented in water architecture to support the education. And I will show you some examples how this can be practically applied or implemented in architecture, how we can use it, how we can work with them. So first, we will look on the truth, how it could be expressed in architecture. And before I will mention in detail, I would like to mention that when Rudolf Steiner was uh, speaking about human, he always mentioned uh, human spirit or spirit human and the conscious soul, these two qualities. And for us, will be very important to take in attention these two qualities because when a child, when the spirit human and the conscious soul of the newly reincarnated essence of the child is coming to the earth, these qualities are looking for something what is connected with attraction or essence of the place about it's connected with the beauty of the landscape or beauty of the place which attract this uh, human soul and conscious human spirit and conscious soul to be living in a certain relationships or circumstances in the place and this beauty this kind of love which is attracting the child is based on the place so did the really the quality of the landscape or different atmospheres 
in the concrete place which this being choose to live. It is not only the family, parents, this is also, of course, but it's also the place. And what makes the attraction for human spirit and uh, conscious soul is the mood, the atmosphere, the quality of the landscape. Sometimes we choose very flat landscape. Sometimes we choose a very hilly mountain landscape. Okay? And here, in your place, what I have recognized, you have a variety of landscape. You have mountains, valleys, forests, <coughs> forests lakes, rivers. It's a very beautiful place here will be very attractive for future child, children, which will be regularly here in this area. And the same quality, which is coming from the landscape, we can try to do also in our project. So because Rolf Steiner says that when such a kind of attraction, quality, is in the architecture itself, it is also attractive for those child those beings to come because even when we will be doing a model during two weeks they are already observing from the mind. They are already those uh, souls which are going to be incarnated in the next 10 years they are already somehow looking, observing where they might incarnate. So they can be helpful for us. And what is creating the mood is mainly the plasticity of a terrain or plasticity of uh, surfaces around us. So it can be plasticity forms in the facade or in the wall inside or on the ceiling or it can be even the whole plasticity of the whole campus, of the whole building. And something essential, something playful. This is just only the example how man can form some material to make it more beautiful. This is the surface of the wood, just wood cut. There are some deeper places, some higher places, and the mood, the atmosphere comes from what? If there is a lower place, and there is a little shadow, there is becoming to be mood. But it attracts your it attracts your attention. Because you mainly, when you look on it, you mainly look on some more dark places. Okay? You first look on, on some places where is your conscious going on. And it is like in architecture. When you walk nearby some building, you maybe always look where I might sit, where is the shadow, where is a niche or balcony, where can I go into? So it is the plasticity, okay, the leveling. And the same principle can be on the floor <coughs> or on the whole property or on the wall. So we will see this from the process of working with clay or with plasticine. So this is just one example, and this is uh, another example of the material. This is a copper clay, which is uh, not or hammered. Yeah. Hammered, thank you, hammered. So you see the quality, the atmosphere. Yeah. Maybe it is a landscape. And this is a clay. This is a sculpture sculpture clay just formed. When we do, when we did it this in one workshop, we just say the exercise is to express something what is liquid, liquid, something what is watery. Not much concretely, but like a surface of the lake or river. But I show it to you because I wanted to do few examples.
examples how we might create an atmosphere on the surface, on different surfaces. So let's have a look on the principles of truth in world of architecture. That is an example of one project of uh, water of uh, school garden on which I would like to present you how we can go closer to the principles of truth. In the very beginning of that project, children from the 10, 11 and 12th grade, it's the high school water in Prague, how they created that project. In the very beginning, they made a small celebration just to go into the beginning of the project. They said some poetry, they sang a song, they fired candles, and they said, okay, let's begin to do that project. They had a small piece of land in front of their school where they wanted to create a small garden for the use of the school. And here you see how they made a research on the property looking for a different kind of moods which are existing in the property. I will give you an exact example. In the, about here in front is the main entrance to the garden. About here in this, this space is the main entrance to the school. Here on the left side is the school building. So from that point until here, they want to create some path, some walking area. That's why they mark with a white powder some line here, just to look. Here is the mood of the walking area. Here we would like to divide it because we would like to say this quality of walking mood or atmosphere and create here another atmosphere. So this line, this border is showing truth between two qualities of the mood or function. And this we can do also in our process that we will be looking, for example, how far from the border of the property we begin with the building, for example. So the truth is coming slowly into our, into our conscious world from our observing. What we see, this is the truth, you know? For example, I go closer to you. <clears throat> now it's okay. But there is certain border when it began to be too private, for example. It's normal. Yeah, I come here, it's not much, but something's changing. But when I go really close, you feel it. So here is a border, border which we can name. This is a border of his privacy. And here is more public. And with, with these quality, qualities, we will work in our conscious common, common world. So after they, they mark it, they say, okay, here, for example, from, from this border, we would like to have a space for outside activities, for learning, for playing here in the middle of the garden. And here, this is for walking. And I will show you the result, how it was made later. Then they made a model after the observing. Here is the place, here is the main entrance to the garden. Here is the main entrance to the school. So this is the path. This is the way where people come into the school. And this, this area here, these were borders which you have seen before. Here is the area for to play. So this is the place where they want to divide it. This shape, this form, 
came naturally from observing and speaking about the need of use. I go once more back and now I go forward to see then they made they, they began to do it the next weekend because everybody agreed they just began without speaking to do it and it is the result after two years so it is a, this is the same place here was before the white line this is the path to the school and there is a place for playing in the middle so this is one of the examples how proof can be expressed in the process of learning. So I was just curious, the, so that is the path that they used for walking. This, this cement here on the left is not the path they used for walking. Is that correct? Um, this one mm -hmm. is very close to the facade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is mainly used to maintain the building. Uh -huh. But the gate is here, not in, not in the corner. It, this is used, this is used. Mm -hmm. This is just when they need to repair something on the facade. So can you go back to the other case that, where they have the white line? Mm -hmm. So what I was wondering about is what is, um, is this line, so these two lines are defining that wall? Yeah, they're the same. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. They are defining, they define the space between walking area and the rest of the space. Okay. So that other line And in between, here was yes, the you look, in between here, from here to here is now a little hill uh -huh. made of earth. And this is grass. And here, here is grass and here is a little wall made of stones. Uh -huh. I will go once more to the result. Yeah. yeah. Here is a little hill. And even today, this is about five years ago, even today, on the top of a small hill are small bushes. So the hill is more like a working for to divide space. Uh -huh. okay. But for our work, this kind of thing can be even a wall of the building, for example. You will see it in the process. I will go back on the model, just show you what was also quite important for those children who are 16, 17 years old. There were few existing trees in the back of the garden, of the existing property, and they want to create some more close, more hidden place just to sit and meet and talk because they like some social behaviors to begin with so it was for them very important to do it in the model and then it is there in the back in the shadow of trees and then that's the place which they, they really like to create it was for them very important because not only architecture, but also trees create the mood, the quality of the space. And this is an, another example where we can see what the truth might be. This is the model of the newly planned water school in Prague. And from the observing the shapes of the model, you can truthfully see where are main entrances? You are not looking for them. Even if you don't know it, I can tell you, I think you are able to recognize where might be some main entrances. So this is also principles of truth. It helps you to orientate 
Where is the entrance? You are not looking for it. So here is a very big entrance here, for example. There is also one small entrance here. And there is an entrance to the inner garden here, in the back. So we can mainly say it is some like a hole or niche or a little roof above which make a empty space where I enter. In your school here it's also nice. On both sides of the main door you have a, some plants. It is very well you can recognize it when you come. And another principle of, principle of the fruit is that from the structure, from the sizes, you recognize where might be the main rooms, the main inside it rooms, like what is what is big, library, new rhythmy hall, entrance hall, gym hall, canteen, something big. And you can recognize that there are some big spaces. Here is something bigger in here. Here is also quite big roof above. Here is a big window. Here is something quite high. So you recognize some basic structure fully. And after a while, visiting such a building, you learn it. You know what is inside. This is a model of a school. Yeah. This is an example of uh, entrance or model where you can see the entrance to the world of kindergarten. This was quite small building, but from the looking you recognize where is the main entrance. And what the uh, Children like, even small children, they like when there is a bit of symmetry on the facade. Because small children, they are always looking on mother's face. And they see the nose, eyes, mouth. They see it quite often symmetry. It's harmonizing them. And here are the main door main door and small windows on both, both sides. So there is a kind of symmetry. And this is this is in the shadow, this is deeper. Also some columns on both sides can be helpful to make it more visible, more grand. From the model, you can recognize that in the first floor there, there is probably some bigger space, and in that case, it was a classroom for playing in the first floor. First floor. When does that start to change? When do children start to step away from needing that symmetry? It doesn't change much because even we, as adults, we like it yeah. somehow. It gives us stability, but if there is too much uh, symmetry, it might be rigid. Mm -hmm. Because a nature is never rigid; it's a bit asymmetric, but we do not recognize. But when you make a picture of your face, and in a computer you take a half and you mirror it, you look different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a it's slight <laughs> yeah, there, there is a slight different, but. We can say like a symmetry as a principle. Mm. And then after I do model, I usually do sketch one step later. Because in modeling, you are more close to the truth. You truthfully express more easy in a model what you feel and want, what you observe, than sketching. When you are only sketching, it might be based 
more on thoughts. And in the modeling process, there is a balance between feelings and thinking, and also will is in it. In sketching, is not much will. In modeling, is a lot of will. And you know that will has a wisdom behind. So you unconsciously do it, and that's right. And when it is not right, you observe it and you say, ah, I might change it. And you go and change it by the will, again, in modeling process. So this is also helpful to get close to the truthful expression of what you want. This is the ground floor plan of the kindergarten. Here is the main entrance. And what is also important in planning world of architecture is that when you enter the building from the another door, this red one, this red, is the cloak room, dressing room, where you change your dresses and shoes. And then when child continue to enter from these doors, she or he recognize where is the main staircase in front of her or him to continue to the first floor. So it is very well recognizable. She or he is not looking where might I, might I go. Immediately the child see, okay, this is the way. Or from here, from these, these doors, these doors are called that classroom in the ground floor. From here, she or he might see the most important thing for the whole kindergarten, which is in that project oven. They like to bake bread with children in that kindergarten, and they decided to build here an oven for baking bread here. So this oven is very well seen from that point. So you can say for children, for us it's very important, for example, kitchen in kindergarten. And when child enters, somewhere there is a really beautiful, well done kitchen. Not hidden, just there. So this was the process with the parents doing that kindergarten model together. It took about two or three days to do it. We spoke about every detail together. And when it was ready, we allowed some children to come and to see, to observe. And they really react like, ah. Because such a small children, they really believe in it is a reality. They see, they are entering, they are in pictures, they understand the model. It attracts them. And here is a few examples of the works of uh, other architects. This is, for example, kindergarten of uh, Christopher Day, a British architect, who was very well known and he was doing very beautiful projects of kindergartens and schools for Bordeaux. And from the looking you see there's a big window or two big two big windows which are classrooms. And from other side of that small kindergarten there is a main entrance. So here are two main classrooms, big, two big windows, one entrance going inward going inside. There is also a fireplace, so when the child enters the room, she or he see it directly. There is also important, for example, some view from the window. We will be looking on that today on the property, just standing in the middle of the property and saying to us, which direction I would like to look from the school? For example, from the main hall or from the Yuriqui Hall or from some other classrooms. What is the important direction of our looking when I enter the space? So 
this is connection with two. And in that uh, architecture for very, very small children in kindergarten, you see how Christopher Day plays with the, with the space. He created here very few, few niches in corners, like small, small rooms, yeah. and, which are a little bit like close and, and louder. When I was here visiting a few classrooms, I seen when you make a break, some of the children went into the furniture inside <laughs> and they sit there and play or rest. And that's the side of the kindergarten from the entrance, from the street. So when the child is coming nearby, she or he recognizes there is something going in. Let's go inside. Is that the same cloth yeah. structure? Yeah. Straw well and straight. Yeah. Very soft. Plaster. Plaster. Yeah. Nice plaster. Which is actually very good for child development to touch. Because it is a bit raw, not smooth. So children in an early age, they they, they recognize surfaces and borders and qualities of material. <coughs> it's even better for a small child to make it more uh, natural. And this is an example when we slowly go from the quality of truth into quality of beauty. Mm -hmm. I have chosen that picture just to tell you what is a quality of art or which kind of art could be appropriate for world of education. As Susan already know that you are talking in pictures. And you do not need a realistic picture to support your stories. Mm -hmm. You are more looking for something which is like in a fog, slowly coming, or behind a glass, milky, milky glass, which has not very exact borders. And this is my I've chosen, chosen that picture, that painting just to show you what is helpful for a small child, which kind of pictures, which kind of art, to support the mood of the space, for example. This is not a very real, you know. There is no uh, face exactly from. This is an incredible uh, to me, it's really because <laughs> um, uh, this, these birds you know coming at that it's so archetypal and it's just that, that moment just one moment you know and it's interesting with Cinderella because people will often I ask them to take a picture from Cinderella for you and they often say the glass slipper or they say the carriage, the pump the carriage that's thrown out the pumpkin for her. But it's really this is really this is the image that comes really from the precursor of Cinderella, which is yeah. the story of Psyche and Eros. Yeah, yeah. This is the expression that our spiritual surrounding mm -hmm. is always helpful. Mm -hmm slowly coming nearby. And the very, very similar quality of the art we can even use in <coughs> plastic work. Doing, for example, picture on the wall or the whole building. So this is an example 
how we can create some spaces to play inside, in kindergarten, And now let's have a look how beauty can be created in Waldorf architecture. I would like to begin with a sketch of uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, where you see his observing of the plant development, or the development of uh, shapes of the plant forms of plant. As you know that Goethe was very good scientist and observer of the nature and uh, when Rudolf Steiner was very young, about 24, 25 years old, he began, he has got a task to make order in Goethe's work, to make it in order. And he was about three, four years in an archive of Goethe's work and he, made, he, he has read all and he made an order. And through that work, he recognized that in Goethe's work is something very essential. And that's the basic for the beauty. Because the beauty comes to our observation only when we observe something what is developed in time. So I mean, when you see a tree, you always, as a whole, but unconsciously, you always observe some parts, when one part follows the other. So there is always a slight difference between leaves which are on the bottom and leaves which are on the top. For example, of different shape, or different color, very small differences. And this is in, in here, you can see, this is when the plant begins, and it's growing, growing, until the, in the end it's only just a seed. It's like a spring, summer, and autumn, the cycle. And when you see it as a whole, or you even remember, I was observing one plant the whole year. Then from that comes the beauty, the sense for beauty. Because you are able to remember the whole process. And in architecture, it might be, for example, a line of windows, for example, 10 windows, when one is developing the shape from the first one, and it's slightly changing. It's a little bit different, one from the other, just like an example. So this is the collecting leaves, a line or metamorphosis of the forms, which is the basic to recognize the beauty. In the the plant kingdom you see it the most, you recognize it the most. In the mineral kingdom it is not so easy to observe uh, minerals or stages of minerals, it takes very long time. But in animal kingdom you can observe it and in human kingdom also you can see it. And this is another example of the so-called Gethianistic art. Because this uh, Gethianistic, it was firstly used by Rolf Steiner because he wanted to use the name of Goethe to name the specific kind of art, which is not the realism, this is not symbolism, this is something between. And that relief is the development of the plant which I have done in a Gatanistic art studies a few years ago, where you see the beginning of the growing, which is not very concrete. It's like something, is that the beginning? It gives you an inner question. What's going on here? But here you see it more concretely. It's 
like a string, like a beginning of growing on the left side. And in the middle, it is the summer. It is when the spirit comes into the beginning of seed, into the blossom. It begins to create the seed. This is the fall, it's autumn. It's like an afternoon. All is going more down. And on the right side is everything more concrete. It has more forms than in the left side. Mm -hmm. So you can follow some development. You can follow some metamorphosis of forms. And we can say, maybe that mood on the left side can be a mood of kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And that here can be a basic school for first till eighth grade. And this might be a high school for you, for example. So this is the principles of beauty, how we, we can apply it in architecture. And here you see a few slightly changing shapes of windows on one facade. That is not a school. I choose it from one of my projects, the, the project, just to show you how it could be formed, for example. This is another example of the metamorphosis of the forms. This is an artistically expressed the development of the shapes of the forces which are behind bones. Forces which create shapes of bones. In anthroposophy we call them etheric forces. Those etheric, etheric forces, all forces which are behind what is growing. Or when you make a home, home when you cut your, your skin, so the force which is dealing to close it again, this is the, this, uh, this quality, etheric quality, this force. Yes. This is the exercise to understand the force in the bone, how it grows, how it changes, how it develops. Beginning with the round shape, which is slowly created as a hollow space, and in a certain moment it opens here. It is divided in here. The hollow space is divided and it is becoming to be turning to be opposite itself but this is also the principle of architecture this is the stage for very early childhood soft shapes round shapes round forms oval ball elliptic shape and the more the child is developed it can be more vertical or more horizontal longer more straight um, it's my understanding that um would we, we want to be round or go towards a round shape why <clears throat> it is held in the atmosphere i may have it so it's a Sphere. 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 And then I heard from someone who was at NASA. Mm -hmm. And he told me that um, when the astronauts are up in space, the cells of the, in their bones start to take on a sphere shape. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. here we have this. Because there are different forces. And we don't have those forces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Here, here always forms begin 
in a form of ball, like an egg. But when it is growing, it is longer, and it is turned, curved. This is not only a detail of a facade, which is also connected a bit with principle of beauty. I wanted to show you these, these uh, places here, for example, when the form, one form, is like going away or is releasing, or that form here, that line, disapp disappear. So this is also kind of principle of beauty, that one form goes slightly into the other form, not directly ending, but slightly, smoothly. And here is just an example of the design of the furniture for early childhood education, that the beauty is also expressed by the soft shapes and very it's like almost a circle, very soft edges. Is this something that you design? No. There are few companies in Germany who produce it. And usually some kindergartens in Germany which I visited, I took few pictures of it there. This is a, another example of the water school where the principle of the beauty is expressed and also the principle of truth where you see the main entrance here. Here, those two windows, one above each other, they symbolize there is a staircase in, inside. You recognize that it's going on. on going higher. There are big windows which express that there is some hall, completely directly hall. And there is also a development of shapes which is connected with beauty that from, let's say, small scale here, it is developing into bigger scale. So you follow, when you look on it, you follow from left side to the right side. So all what you follow in time, it creates a beauty. If you have an inner need to observe an architecture, let's say 20 seconds, looking from one corner of the building to the other, you will recognize that what creates the beauty. So that so evolution, like we were talking about in the bones, yeah, that evolution. Like, that evolution is also showing in the whole building. Yeah. From one, so like you say, what you can see in one span of time is uh, yeah. And then there is a similar principle like that. For example, in composition of the window, when you have a you, for example, you have a big room, and you need more than one window. From the maybe static questions, you do, you are not able to do just one big window. You need three windows because in the middle you need two columns. You need three windows. How to make it thoughtfully and beautiful? That you make one window in the middle, and you need two extra windows on both sides, but you need to recognize that it is just one space. So the window, which is on the side, should be by its form closer to the middle one. From that composition, you recognize that these two belong to the middle one. You feel it from the shape. Like, like roof. 
and you can recognize that on the top, for example, or even here, that this, what is in the middle, is always bigger. And this, what is on the sides, is always a bit smaller. But by this shaping, even if it is quite rectangular, this shape goes to the middle one. Also, the composition. These two windows are windows for the classroom. And from the shape, it's just one window, second window, and the shape is about this principle. So these two are together. Yeah. If I make it opposite, if I make this this, it does not give sense, okay? It's not together. But you know, if you have a, if you have a shape of bush in the nature, it is always growing and it makes a hole. This is coming from this. Because you are able to recognize natural shapes from your knowledge, from your wisdom, that you know that something what is the whole is usually covered above something round, which makes it together. So this gives sense, or even it can be even more, more round. It gives sense. And it works in trinity or duality, or even if here are five windows, you can play with it. You can add some more windows, and still it is one room. And here is the ground floor of that school in Germany, where, for example, I like the rhythm of the corridor. Here are some more wider spaces. Here is a little bit more narrow, and again, bigger space, and narrow, and bigger. You can see the rhythm, how the size of the, sh of the, of the space is changing. So it is not boring. Child goes inside, outside, inside, outside. And also, there might be a play with the light, with the daylight. For example, those open spaces are lighted more with the roof windows, and those more narrow spaces, there is a little bit shadow or a little bit darker. So, this is also the principle of, of beauty. And uh, the last example is my last project in Germany, in Chemnitz, where you see some ground floors, where also those yellow color, color corridors are like more open with the daylight, more closed with less light, and more open with the daylight. But what I would like to show you on the model of that plant are forms where the beauty is also created by the principle that one form goes slightly into the other form. So it means that, for example, the roof continue into the other roof. In, in, in here, it follows the shape. And by the way, these forms were not created by thinking. These were mainly created by will and feeling, doing the model.
this in the process of doing, doing the work. And the main <coughs> material, the main structure, will be wood, wood wooden structure yeah, inside. And then on surface of those wooden structures will be plaster. It will be plaster. Yeah, concrete. No concrete. I do not use concrete very, very rarely. Only sometimes for big structures and for foundation. In this case, they would like to have a green roof. There is not so hot like here. So they prefer to have a green roof. But it could be, I mean, is that if we achieve that same continuity of form with like let's say metal? I'm just trying to think like technically if these are materials that you're kind of that we're planning to use because it just seems yeah. a little bit of a stretch for the yeah. wall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this this all will come from our common discussion. What is appropriate for here, what is practical, yeah. what you can make in a form. You can bend, you can bend it, for example. Yeah, it will come. We will also have a, a part of the record to this logo. Yeah. Will it be? Will it sure. Be yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So the last uh, feature, the last quality is the quality of wood. Goodness. And this is interesting, it is connected with the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It is connected with the quality of the atmosphere which is inside, connected with the voice and with the sounding of the room. Because when the acoustic is well or good, you as a teacher feel well because there is no echo. The room gives you a chance to speak um, silent, not loudly, because it has a good shape and it, it resonates. It helps you to improve your quality of voice. That is mainly about acoustic, and acoustic is connected with the concrete uh, ratios or concrete dimensions of the room, of the space like a instrument, like a guitar or violin, it has a certain measure, certain ratios, which were developed during a long time, trying, proving, self-serving. And for example, in that kindergarten classroom, the quality which is created or supported by the good are those angles of the ceiling in the corner. I mean here. Around it. Around it. Yeah. You know, this was a kindergarten that was not like that, that they invited you in yeah. to do this. It is in an existing building <coughs> and they added it additionally. Here is the wall, here is the ceiling, here is the floor, and here is the angle, a new, new, new ceiling in here. And we will be talking about exact ratios which are helpful for acoustic. And mostly is the used ratio of Quinta, which is two, to three. So here on the side of the wall are two parts. Here on the ceiling are three parts. So the ratio of the angle is Quinta. Two 
ratio is the, let's say most auspicious for Waldorf education. You have a pentatonic flute tuned in quinta. It's quite often used that proportion, that ratio. Here you can see it in detail. It is also slightly changing. In the corner it is bigger and in the middle room it is smaller, but it is all the time the same angle. <coughs> it is uh, moving only up and down. So the angle is always the same. The ratio stays. Is that because of the artistic reasons or because of the physical? This was really only because of acoustic. Because there was a terrible acoustic in the room and they asked, please, can you improve the acoustic? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm looking at that, that deeper in the corner. This I explained. Yeah, thank you for the question. This is uh, improving the acoustic. I will draw a uh, view on the side of the room, okay? For example, here is a door and here is a big window, okay? This is the floor, this is the ceiling. And it is uh, slightly changing Like this. Here it is lower, here it is higher. This dimension is uh, smaller, this dimension, this length is longer. It is helpful for acoustic too because when a teacher is standing here or sitting, talking this direction, this slight difference helps to send the voice back to the child. It means when here is a group of children sitting, listening a story tale, they are receiving not only frontal uh, the 